I think that there are moments in our life where you need someone to step alongside of you. You know, I'm a, a big fan of the hero's journey, big fan of story brand. You know, there are times when you need that guide to step into your life and, and speak into your life. And I think something that's been really important for me and my journey is making sure that that's a trusted voice who stands for the same kind of moral, you know, life that I want to lead. And, you know, I think having that person be able to lean in and coach and guide and say, God created you. Hey guys, welcome to the Troy Grambling Podcast. As always, I am humbled and honored to have you come and hang out with us as uh, we talk about potential, how to be everything that God's created us to be. And uh, we do our best to learn from as many different people as possible because we're, you know, we're all on a different journey. We all find ourselves at different places. And today, well, it's no exception. We have a very uh, special uh, guest and uh, quite gifted leader. Molly Matthews is with us from... I guess uh, pu is PushPay the name of the uh, the whole company? But uh, Molly, thanks for being here. We're so glad to have you today. Yeah, thank you so much, Pastor Troy. It's an honor to to be with you today, and I'm really excited to to dig in and talk about potential. Well, uh, again, it's great to have you. So, if you would just take a moment, kind of introduce yourself to everyone who's uh, watching or listening today. Yeah, perfect. So my name is Molly Matthews. I am the CEO of a company called PushPay. And PushPay is a company that builds technology for churches. So we have the absolute honor of serving some of the largest churches in America. We serve churches in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and here in the U.S., and we do that through live streaming and media. We do that through donor management. And we also have a fantastic CHMS product that we we also sell and serve churches with. So how, how uh, long has the company been in, I guess, in business, you would say? Yeah, so it's it's this is a little bit of a unique answer. So PushPay has been a company for 11 years. Church Community Builder, who's now a part of our family, they have been around for over 20 years. And then Resi Media is about six years old. So I would say all in, we are, you know, over <laughs> 20 years, oh, 20 years old, have learned so many fantastic lessons. And our goal always as a company is to be a company that churches want to partner with well into the future. So 20 years in and hopefully 40, 50, 60 to go. <laughs> so, you know, I know you um when you have when you started with the company, you uh, you didn't start out as CEO and the founder, so it's kind of been a journey uh, for you. So tell us a little bit about your journey uh, in, to the CEO position. Yeah, a journey is a fantastic way to describe the last uh, eight years. So I've been here for eight years, which is crazy to think about this month actually. And when I first came to meet the founders of PushPay. They were wonderful, charismatic, inspirational young guys who both were from New Zealand, so had these awesome accents as well, which I always <laughs> joke helped them, I'm sure, uh, in their journey. And they were really looking for somebody to help them, you know, create the a best in class way of how they would serve churches, right? So it was the service kind of orientation of, of what they were wanting to do. It was a wild ride in the early days, as you know, in starting your organization, you wear so many hats. And for me, I loved that. Like I loved being able to have my hand in many things. I loved being able to support the growth of different parts of our business. And across time just grew into different leadership roles. We started a lot of new things here. We, we've acquired several companies since I've been here, and that's something that I, you know, really leaned into and love doing, building relationships with founders and owners and and then stewarding their business as well into the future, I think is, is a gift that I have been given. Um, so it has been a wild ride, but one that has been so fulfilling. And we have the opportunity at PushPay to serve over 14,000 churches in America and across the world, which is also amazing. And we have over 550 employees that work for us today. So it's been a journey of growth, 
it's been a journey of some sacrifice, which I'm sure you can appreciate. And it's definitely one that has just brought me tremendous joy. Yeah. Now, did you go to college to to uh, to be in business, or is this something you kind of evolved into, or is this uh, a position, or at least a role that you have always kind of seen yourself uh, eventually uh, being a part of? Yeah. So I was born into a family of business owners. So my grandparents owned restaurants. My dad had his own construction company. Um, my husband, his family, both are, his mom owned gift shops and his dad was a contractor. So we have just always had that kind of, you know, entrepreneurial spirit throughout, you know, my, my upbringing, but for sure, once I kind of launched into the working world, but the answer is no, I did not go to school for business. I did not think, you know, when I was 22 and graduating that I would be a CEO someday. One of the things that has been really unique about my journey is I grew up in a very small town and graduated with 55 kids from my high school <laughs> and went to the University of Oregon, which, you know, was huge compared to the school that I grew up in and really loved the opportunity to, to learn and see futures for myself that I had never imagined. And so it was really an opportunity for me to both meet people and network. I got to lead Young Life as a college kid, which was so fun. And it just introduced me to different paths and avenues that, tr to be really honest, as a kid, I didn't even know existed. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid growing up, I didn't even probably know what a CEO was or a CFO or any other business title. You know, we lived in a small town with one stoplight. But as I started to grow in my career, I had always been very passionate about how you use data to solve root issue problems. So I started out in social work, if you can believe it, and really found a passion for helping people who had systemically kind of fallen into the same behaviors as their parents or grandparents that were unhealthy. And so how could we kind of break that apart and help them to see a better path for themselves. So that was really kind of how I started. And then you sort of realize that the system is supporting people to not break out of that pattern. And so we were able to get some funding um, and create wonderful programs that help people to thrive and grow out of those circumstances. And from that, I launched a couple of small businesses, some with my husband, uh, Ty, who is fantastic. And he he's the like charismatic salesperson in our relationship. And I'm like the business minded, like serious one. But it, it just led me down this path of leadership. It led me down the path of growing things. It led me down the path of solving really difficult problems. And that led me to push pay after, you know, probably 15 years of a career in, in consulting and then in other small and, and medium sized businesses. Wow. Now, how long have you been in the role of a CEO? So I've been in this role for three years and um, had the the absolute honor of leading alongside our founders, both at Church Community Builder and at PushPay for years before that, um, have had a wonderful relationship with board members over the years. And, you know, I think one of the things I love about what you're doing and in your book is just talking about people leaning into who they were created to be. Mm. And I'll be really honest, like I was not a kid that had I, I was always kind of a fighter, you know, like just willing to to do whatever it takes to get something done, but didn't ever think of myself as like being in the top spot. And I had so many incredible mentors, our founders, our board members who just kept gently pushing and gently pushing and saying, why are you not leaning into who you were created to be? Mm -hmm. And it was, it was an aha moment for me to have to, to kind of say, Ooh, why not? Right. Mm. Like, why am I, I hesitating? And so just so grateful for that push and nudge and the support of those who've really rallied around me, not just in the last three years, but in the many, many years before that to help me to be prepared for this spot today. So do you think that just that, uh, I guess, belief in who you are and the capacity, it, would that be maybe your biggest obstacle to embracing your potential or is there something else that's uh, been in the way at times? Yeah. You know, I think, I think that there are moments in our life where you need someone to s step alongside of you. 
you know, I'm a, a big fan of the hero's journey, big fan of story brand. You know, there are times when you need that guide to step into your life and, and speak into your life. And I think something that's been really important for me and my journey is making sure that that's a trusted voice who stands for the same kind of moral, you know, life that I want to lead. And, you know, I think having that person be able to lean in and coach and guide and say, to you, God created you to do this in this moment. Like, are, are you going to like not listen or are you going to really lean into that has been, I think the most, um, the most foundational mental shift that I have had to make in order to be able to take on this role. Yeah. You know, it's funny, even as I was writing the book, you know, that's the same challenge that Moses had. It's a, it's the same challenge that so many uh, of us have, you know, we, we were, we were, um, a lot, we were a part invisible before we were visible. And, yeah. and that's just always really encouraged me to, to be reminded that we are that intentional. You know, we, you know, we weren't born and then God said, what am I going to do? He actually yeah. created us with a sense of, you know, he could see you in this position, uh, you know, long before you could ever see yourself into this, uh, in this position. And, uh, that's incredibly encouraging, you know, when it you is. go through those obstacles and, and, uh, and challenges. And so, freeing really, right? Like yeah. it, it, it's, it's really freeing for you to lean into your potential as opposed to fight it. Mm, right. When yeah. you, when you have that, that just, you know, when, when those words are spoken into you. Now, so three years in uh, this position and, you know, a lot of times, I mean, that's the, the top of the organization that you're a part of today. And a lot of times when uh, people get to the top, they can, you know, start to, um, maybe drag their feet a little bit or feel, you know, as we, uh, the thing I love about potential is the more, the more we embrace our potential, the more potential we have, you know, the more we That's grow, right. the more we can do. What are some of the things that you've implemented into your life to, to make sure you continue to increase your capacity as you go forward? Yeah. And, and I think capacity is such a great word and it's something that I am always thinking about, right? I, I also am a person who, gets bored easily. So ha constantly having the next and the new or thinking about expansion or giving myself the freedom to think bigger and broader for our company's impact and how we can be of service into the community, I think is, is what I, you know, what wakes me up every morning and gets me excited to, to keep coming into this great spot. Um, but I think when it comes to capacity, one of the things that I had to learn really early on is there's actually a lot of minutes and a lot of hours in the day. And how you choose to spend that often is what directs your output or your impact. And so, you know, a couple of the things that I've had to do to create capacity is say no far more often than I say yes, and really kind of cut out the things that aren't either feeding me or helping me to grow. So for me, and, you know, I know this is not a popular thing to say, but for me, that's, I don't watch TV. I very rarely watch movies unless it's with my family and it's kind of a fun, you know, family moment. You know, I try to really limit the time that I'm on social media or that I'm, I'm like scrolling on any devices. And, and that has freed up hours within mm. every day. I remember when I first stopped, I'm like, goodness gracious, I didn't realize, right? that you're staying up maybe until 11 o'clock at night watching, you know, some probably beautifully written and, and, you know, great rating show, but isn't really fueling or feeding me. Mm. And so using that time that I've, I've freed up that capacity to really be authentically focused, mm. right. On what we need to do as a team thinking about, you know, I am so grateful and, you know, you're, I'm, guarantee your team is feeling the same way about you. I'm so grateful for the people in my life who've gone before me that have shown me the way. And I feel like one of my unique callings in life is to do that for others, right? Mm -hmm. To lean in, to pour in, to mentor up the next set of leaders, both at PushPay, but outside of PushPay. And so I think about people a lot deeply, right? Mm -hmm. In my organization, what do they need to be motivated? What, what do they need? What feedback do they need to unlock that next gate of potential in their mm -hmm. life and cre creating mind space for that? And then, you know, I'm, a, I'm an old school, like note taker. I like a, a pen, paper, 
And I just often will find myself kind of taking notes, right, on what it is that I want for people, how I want to inspire, how I want them to like really lean into whatever this next season is. So the capacity for me has been saying no to stuff that doesn't help me to grow or doesn't give me capacity to think about my family or to think about the folks that I'm able to lead. So I can hear somebody saying, so if you're not watching, you know, the movies and TV and you're not on social media, what do you do to relax? Yeah, I love <laughs> nature. So for me, you know, just being outside is super relaxing, like going on walks, hikes in the winter, my family, we love to ski, snow ski. So mm. any chance we can, we're trying to be at the mountain my kids are involved in sports and a whole bunch of stuff. So being on the sideline of a softball field or at a track, honestly, for me is really relaxing. Like just watching your kids thrive and grow and participate is, is something that I, for me is very life-giving. Mm. So let me ask you a question. You know, you're in the top position of leadership within a company that primarily, you know, partners with churches to yes. connect people. Um, as a woman, you know, because churches aren't often known to um, empower the potential of ladies, you know, true or not true, but uh, the Southern Baptist just had a big vote on that actually this year. Have you found that challenging or do, has that something that you really haven't experienced or how has that, how has that been? I love, I love that you're going there. Um, you know, it's interesting. I, I'll be really honest there was a part of me that was a bit nervous to say yes to the role because I didn't want it to hinder our ability to be of service to the church, right? I didn't want anything that I did, whether it be the fact that I'm female or anything else to hinder all of the great work. I mean, we have, again, an amazing team that's working so hard and they desire so deeply to be of service to the church. And so I didn't want anything that I would do to be a barrier to that. And I had the opportunity as I was kind of thinking through, like, is this the right next step for Push Bay and for myself to talk to a couple of, and I'm not going to name names, but a couple of very influential pastors across the U.S. that I trust and are just wonderful mentors to me. And they said the same thing that my mentor said, lean into what God has created you to do. What are you doing? Just say yes. You know, <laughs> and it was such a like, it, it just, I remember it just being like such a freeing moment. I mean, these are giant churches who you might think have some feelings about like women in leadership, right? And in reality, they were like, God gifted you with the brain that you have. God gave you all of the experiences that you've had in your life to make you gritty and tough as nails. Like, why would you not lean in and do this and be of service to the kingdom? Would you rather take that and be of service into the business space? Right. You know, and it was, it was a great, it, again, I feel like I've had these moments throughout my career where people have kind of had to do a little bit of the, like, shake you to wake up. And, and for me, it also helped me to really lean into this kind of next phase of push pay with a, a tremendous amount of faith in the faith community that people were really ready for a little bit of modernization and how we do view that. So, you know, super grateful for those voices in my life and they know who they are. But, um, you know, I think one of the things I appreciate about the, the era that we live in today is that people are really eyes wide open about gifting mm. and that God gives gifts to different people for different reasons and different seasons. And I feel like I've been called to really lean in in this season in this way. No, oh, that's great. And I, and I think such an encouragement to so many different folks to, to not settle for the potential that somebody else, you know, determines that you have as opposed to who God's actually created you to, uh, to be and uh, to experience it. You know, you've dealt with folks uh, there at Push Pay and as you said, in so many different uh, environments. What do you see as um, maybe the main uh, obstacle that keep people from experiencing their potential and, and growing um, in who God's created them to be? Yeah, I think I, I think there are kind of two things that, that come into view for me. And one of them is probably going to upset some folks, but I'm going to say it is laziness. Like mm. this life is not for everyone. Mm. Leaning into your potential is not for the faint of heart. 
It is not for people who want to be like, you know, couch surfing a lot of the day, <laughs> right? Or kind of doing the bare minimum. And you know this, you've grown a beautiful organization and you're impacting so many people across the world, but in your community in Florida, like that didn't come because you weren't grinding it out. Mm -hmm. And I think people forget that component, like this life of leaning into your potential, whether it's me being a great mother, a great wife, or a great leader takes effort. Mm -hmm. And I think effort is the piece that sometimes is the limiter of people really leaning into their potential. And then the other one is fear. I think mm -hmm. fear so often keeps people from really stepping into what is next for them. And that one's tough, right? Because that's where grace comes in. That's where mentorship comes in. That's where we have to allow at times people to speak into our life. And that's scary, right? That, that creates vulnerability, which a lot of people aren't super comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think fear and then, you know, just effort are, are the two that I see limit people most. Uh, that's so good. You know, we're about out of time, but I got two more questions for you. One is, okay. as you were talking about, uh, you know, obstacles that people have to their potential as a mom, what are some of the things that you've, uh, tried or that you've done to help your children, you, you know, have a, a desire to be everything they can be to not settle for less or like you were talking to, to live lazily. Uh, what are some things you've learned along the way as a mom? Yeah, goodness. I'll tell you what, hardest, most difficult job I've ever had in my life is being a parent. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, both both the and the most rewarding by far. I think for my kids, you know, I have two girls. Uh, they're 15 and 13 right now, which is crazy to think. <laughs> and, you know, I I want them to be able to have their own voice. You know, I really want them to be able to try new things and be able to fail safely while they are living in our home, make some mistakes while, you know, their dad and I are, are here to help mm -hmm. versus them leaving our house and then trying all of the things and failing without that safety net. And, you know, we really encourage them to, to try the new stuff that's super scary, mm -hmm. right? Go, go join the track team if you've never run track, Right. Go to that youth group meeting, even though you don't have any friends that are going, mm. right? How, you know, and, and just creating some options for them to, to really try. And we, we share like, it might not go well, right? You might go to youth group at this new church because it's super fun and you don't have a friend and it might be super scary and you may not talk to anybody, but you still were brave. You were bold. You tried something new. And most of the time, right, you make you make a new friend or you have some success mm. on the, you know, on the track or wherever that is. So I think that's something we we work really hard at in our house is to encourage the new mm. and be okay with it not working out. Yeah, that's so good. Our middle son, Carson, he was uh, going to a brand new school in, in middle school. And I guess the day he happened to begin, they were having school elections. And so the, they were uh, running for student council. And uh, so his first day at that school in that class, he decided to put his name in for student council president or class president. And that day when Steph went to pick him up, she said, he's all smiling. And she says, well, how was your day? And he was telling her all about how he ran for uh, student council or student president. So she thought he must have won. <laughs> and he said, he said, no, I got one vote. And she said, well, that's good. And he said, yeah, I voted for myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But I think, you know, we have a phrase in our house too, that we use a lot because, you know, fear comes in for kids too, maybe even more so than adults. And we say, why not you? Mm. Why not you? Yeah. Right. Why not you? And I think my kids would probably like say that's the most annoying thing that my mom says. <laughs> but every once in a while when we're driving somewhere and we're talking, I can hear one of them say, I know, mom, why not me? You know, <laughs> but it, but it's such a great like way to say, right. like, why why do you think it's OK for somebody else to, you know, earn, get, be on the team and not you like that's just not how we we operate yeah that's so that's so good and so and something they can remember and will stick with them for way yes. into the future all right last question is everybody gets discouraged and often mm -hmm. you know discouragement i remember uh, Jerry Falwell a long time ago said that, you know, you, you can see the character of a person by what it takes to discourage them. So mm -hmm. what do you do when you find uh, yourself uh, uh, discouraged? Yeah, it's such a great question. 
I think I always try to remind myself, what do I know to be true? Right? So often discouragement might be something failing. It could be some harsh words from somebody. It could be that someone, you know, disappoints you in their performance or their, most of the time, it's usually their attitude, not so much their performance. And I always have to remind myself, hey, what do I know to be true? And what I know to be true is that that person has potential. That's why I hired them, right? Mm -hmm. And I also lean into ownership. I hired them. (laughs) Therefore, part of this is on me, right? To make sure that I stay positive, that I lean in and I give very crisp feedback so that next time that doesn't happen. And so I think, you know, there's so much power in positivity and it's tough, right? That sounds so easy. It is difficult to stay positive when you are really feeling discouraged. Mm. But what do I know to be true? Nobody loves negativity, right? Nobody's like, yes, I am so glad I went to the office today and it felt really negative, right? But everybody, when they bump into you and, and you do such a beautiful job of this, when you encourage the people that you interact with, they want to be around you right? They want to be a part of potential church. Same thing at push pay. Like when they interact with me and they have a positive interaction, even if it's in the delivery of a tough message, they want to come back for more. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's such a responsibility as leaders that we have to, even in moments of disappointment, be encouraging. And I try to lead myself well in that way because I do get discouraged, right? And so I have to say, what do I know to be true? That's what good. do I know it to be true? That's good. You know, ownership is is empo- is so empowering. I, I remember the church that we started in Arkansas years ago, and it wasn't growing at you know the rate I would have liked to have seen it grow. And I remember I went back to my office, and you know, just a couple of folks on staff at the time, and uh, I'm sitting there, and I'm, my mind, what I'm thinking is, if these people could get their act together, <laughs> this church <laughs> would grow a whole lot quicker, you know. And just, you know, this person, ah, oh, they didn't show up for that, you know. All this stuff's going through my mind, and it's just like uh, the Holy Spirit just immediately, you know, asked the question, "Well, who's the leader?" You know, because mm-hmm. when I was blaming them, it was disempowering. It's like I can't, you know, if they could get their act together, then the church could impact the community. It could grow. And so that's so disempowering. You know, you're waiting on somebody else. But the moment I thought, you know, the God's spirit just kind of convicted me and said, well, if you would become a better communicator or a better leader or a better vision, mm-hmm. you know, in other words, um, it actually encouraged me as opposed to discouraged me because it's like, no, no, God has, like you said, what is true? God has created me. He has called me to this position. And therefore I can do something about this, you know, this situation as opposed to waiting for somebody else to, you know, get their act together or whatever. Yeah. And uh, that's, uh, what do I know to be true? That's a great, uh, a great way to phrase that, to, to be remembered and uh, yeah. lived out. Well, thank you so much for your time and thank you for what you do. Thank you for uh, the impact that PushPay has in helping people connect and reach their own potential. You know, um, like you said, uh, the, the ability to to connect with people in this day, and especially the importance of data and ways and avenues and systems and all the things that I'm not that great at. I appreciate that you guys are and that you partner with us and many others along the way. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been wonderful. Yeah. We've learned a lot and uh, I know you've encouraged a whole lot of people. And I want to thank everybody for watching or listening today on the podcast and just remind you that every Thursday at eight, when new one drops and our heart is to uh, connect with you and to see you uh, grow and mature and not only in your faith, but in who God's called you to be. Remember, subscribe, share, even hit the little bell so you'll know when we go live because we do that from time to time. Every Sunday night at seven o'clock, we have actually a live stream that we'd love for you to be a part of. We just have a good time and always take a few moments to talk about how to reach our potential. Thanks again. I hope you have an incredible week and uh, God bless. We'll see you next time.